the time has come to build our first circuit. We're going to build it on something called a breadboard or a solderless prototyping board. They look like this. You can get little stubby ones as well. It doesn't really matter. We're building very small circuits. You can use either type. A breadboard consists of a matrix array of holes in vertical columns and horizontal rows. And on the back side, underneath the covering, are metal strips that essentially follow the same form as the holes on the front. This is set up in such a way that anything that you plug into a hole here in a vertical column is connected to all the other holes thanks to the metal strip. Likewise, anything plugged into one of the horizontal lines down here connects to this metal strip and interconnects with anything else plugged into any other hole. And in this way, you can make interconnections between components without using solder. And more importantly, you can disconnect things that aren't connected correctly and change the wiring. Now, the chip we're going to use for our first circuit is a 74C14. This is a CMOS digital logic chip. It's what is known as an inverter. Each output puts out the opposite of what goes into the input. And we're going to adapt a logic chip never intended for making sound into making a square wave oscillator. You start by pressing it into the board anywhere making sure that each pin goes into one hole and that none are folded underneath in the manner of a meditative yoga. Now, once you've done this, you've got it set up so that anything plugged into one of these um, vertical columns will connect to the pin that's connected in it. All right? So the first thing we're going to do is configure our power. Now, the power on this board, we're going to run along the horizontal buses. We're going to take a battery and a battery clip like this, and we're going to press the black wire into one end of a lower bus and the red wire into one end of an upper bus, like this. Now, positive voltage will appear in every hole along there and negative voltage in every hole along there. Now we need to make connections from the chip to the power supply. There's a notch at this end of the chip and a little dot sometimes there by that pin. And that indicates that that is pin 1. The way the numbering works on a chip, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, over to here, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This chip has 14 pins. The power supply connections are at the opposite corners. Pin 7 goes to ground. Pin 14 goes up to plus voltage. In order to make that connection, we have to make a little jumper out of wire. So I take a bit of solid insulated wire, not stranded wire, and I strip about a quarter of an inch off of either end, like this, and I connect from anywhere in the row, in the column that pin 7 goes into, and then I connect this down anywhere along the line that the black wire is connected to. Then I have to do the same with pin 14. I have to connect pin 14 up to the upper row where the red wire is plugged in. Don't make the mistake of connecting it to the parallel row. All right, Each row goes across, but they don't interconnect. So at the moment, this is connected to nothing. And we want connected to something, specifically plus voltage. All right, now, if you looked at the pinout of this chip in the book, you'll notice that pin 1 is an input to an inverter, and pin 2 is an output we need to connect two components in order to make this into an oscillator. We need to take a capacitor and connect it between pin 1, the input to the inverter, and ground. So we simply stick it in like this. We're using a capacitor of 0.1 
microfarads. It's a good starting value for our circuit. Secondly, you need to get a resistor. 100K is a good value. And bend the leads so it's like a croquet hoop and connect it between pin 1 and pin 2, between the input and the output of the chip. So now what we have is we have two connections at pin 1, one leg of the capacitor, one leg of the resistor, one connection at pin 2. And then the other leg of the capacitor is still down to ground. Now, in theory, the oscillator is oscillating, but we can't hear it. So we need to connect it to an amplifier. To do that, we plug a jack into the amp. We connect one line to the ground of the plug. And we connect that to the ground line here on our breadboard, like this. Then we take another lead and we connect it to the tip of the plug that's going into the amp. And we connect this to a stiff bit of wire that we connect to pin 2. And lo and behold, our oscillator. Great. We have a square wave that is buzzing along at some frequency. But what if we want to change the frequency? Well, we can replace this 100K fixed resistor with a photoresistor. A photoresistor, you may recall from our work with the toys, is a resistor whose resistance changes in response to light. So if I plug this down between pins 1 and 2, like this, I can now connect pin 2 with the wire. And we have an oscillator whose pitch can be controlled by the amount of light that strikes it. However, as you noticed, it's very high frequency because there's a lot of light here at the moment. The other component that sets the performance, the frequency range of this oscillator is the capacitor. If we make the capacitor larger, the pitch will go down. If we make the capacitor smaller, the pitch will go up. We're going to take a larger capacitor. This little yellow thing was 0.1 microfarads. Now we're going to put in 2.2 microfarad capacitor. So 20 times larger. In any case, it's a different form of capacitor. The 0.1 looked like a little chip of plastic, whereas the 2.2 looks like a little can with two legs coming out of the bottom. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that along one side is a black stripe with minus symbols repeated in it, and that one leg of the capacitor is a little bit shorter than the other. The minus symbols and the short leg indicate minus. This is the leg of the capacitor that you must put into the ground bus, and the other one goes to pin 1. You can plug it in backwards and nothing will blow up, but it won't perform as stably. All right, let's hear what happens now. So you can hear that it has a lower pitch range than the circuit we had before. OK. Light is one control characteristic we can use to adjust the frequency of this oscillator, but it's not the only one. If we wanted, we could control the pitch with a potentiometer. In order to do that, we remove the photocell from the board, and we put in two pieces of wire, one into pin 1 and one into pin 2. Then we grab ourselves two clip leads, clip onto here, clip onto here, and then we clip the other ends of the clip leads to the center 
tab of the pot, what we might call the nose, and one of the ears, like this. And now, if we listen, we can adjust the pot to change the frequency. This is going quite low. It's almost like a metronome at its lowest extreme. If we take this capacitor out and we put back in the point 1, you'll notice that the pitch range goes up. So you can see it's a combination of a resistor and a capacitor that are used to set the frequency of the oscillator. Turns out it's very easy to make a resistance that changes continuously. It's very difficult to do that with a capacitor. So we tend to use a capacitor to set the range of the oscillator and some form of variable resistor to make the performance element of changing the pitch continuously. Now, there are other things that you can use as resistors besides pots and photocells. For example, you notice that when we uh, perform the radio by putting our fingers straight on the circuit, we were actually using the resistance of our own skin to adjust the frequency of uh, the feedback network that was in place. Now, I can touch two pennies with my fingers and use the resistance of my skin to adjust the frequency of our oscillator here. Now it turns out this is down at rather a, slow, a low range. I'm going to put a smaller capacitor in here to raise up the pitch of the oscillator a bit and see if we can get more responsiveness out of our electrodes. So that's a way to combine the, oh, shall we say, the predictability of the basic sound of our oscillator with the slightly goofier and more um, intuitive performance interface of the electrodes or the skin contact that we had when we were working with the radio circuit.